Hello, I'm Manuela Saragossa. Welcome to Business Daily from the BBC. Coming up, a requiem for empty shopping malls. If there's empty stores there, it's not only a presence of disengagement, places I don't want to shop, places I don't want to spend. When we ask the consumer how they feel about this, they actually have gone as far as to say they feel unsafe what internet shopping has done to the shopping mall. But some malls are adapting. We'll hear how. There are even websites exclusively dedicated to cataloguing images of dying and dead malls. But is that what's in store for shopping malls everywhere as more and more of us choose to shop online? Not necessarily, says Kate Hardcastle. She's a consumer expert at retail consultants Insight with Passion here in the UK. Retail can be an industry in which best practice tends to be whatever competitors look to be doing well. It's very much a case of traditional retails following what they know and trying to improve it marginally. So a new mall might have better food and beverage offer, more social retail as theatre and supermarkets as part of the mix. But even so, it's still a challenging environment. There's a heck of a lot of space goes into a shopping mall and that space all needs to be providing you profit. I mean, do shopping malls tend to be profitable? Generally, a shopping mall can be profitable. It depends how you divide the space up. Definitely where we've been able to take an existing mall and change some of the tenants within that to maybe dentists, gyms, health and beauty offerings, even local community offerings, we're seeing greater success. It's about filling the space. Having space that is full attracts footfall. It attracts people to go and visit. If it's something as regular as a dentist appointment, you're naturally going to be going to that site and then what they're hoping on is the traditional retail of pickup. We're reliant on people buying more than they anticipated buying for things to be successful. So you need it to look full and presentable. And then they also need to try and deliver as much as they can for a busy person's life. So can I have my health check done there? Can I visit the gym there? Can I pick up a fruit smoothie there? And can I get a healthy meal for the evening meal there? And that's, I imagine that's happening because so many of us are buying online now. And there's got to be a reason to get out the house and go and buy something physically. When I talk to consumers around the world, they tell me that they feel they're more time pressured than ever before. And obviously they've got a tool at their fingertips now where they can buy pretty much anything they want within seconds. In the UK here, we've seen in a year alone, the spend go from one in every seven pounds online to one in every five in 2017 alone. Generally across every territory, we are buying less stuff and we are spending more money on the experience of socialising together. And therefore, the opportunity has to be what we class social retail. The engagement in retail space to offer as many services and offer to the customer the most time-saving possible. And therefore, the future, yes, will tip further and further with spend online. Where that is something that the customer doesn't enjoy buying or engaging with, they will use online more frequently. And we're looking up to 30% within the next couple of years in the UK for all online spend. But there'll still be a need for traditional retail. It just will be with retailing of so many other services rather than just products. And are most malls doing this? Because I understand that in America, a lot of malls are really struggling. Some malls have caught on to the opportunity. Sadly, other malls, it's just not an opportunity for them. They might be in an area people no longer feel they want to go to. It could be that an attractive newer mall has opened just a few miles away, which have got better brands. And then there's really a question of, are the owners going to invest in that property, reface it, make it worthwhile again, or are they almost going to trade out of it? I was going to say, because there's nothing more depressing than a deserted shopping mall of empty shops. It really isn't. When we ask the consumer how they feel about this, they actually have gone as far as to say they feel unsafe. So you, in your capacity, in your job, you must go to loads of shopping malls all over the world. Which ones are the ones that you've come across that you think they really got it right? Things I like don't have to be about big spend. In Australia, I think they really invested in food and beverage very well so that if people couldn't 
pay to be part of the brands that they wanted to browse. They could at least enjoy the treat of anything from a cocktail to a new trend in food. Here in the UK, a brand of shopping malls called New River have started to engage with our 11 million older people who feel lonely. So they've started putting on coffee mornings and engaging with that part of the community. Within the UK, disposable income is quite high amongst the over 50s and once they're in the centre and they've enjoyed the company for a couple of hours of a cup of coffee, which is cost quite marginal, they've got the opportunity to go in and spend and they don't want to move from one place to another place. They see that as hassle and a waste of time. So there are advantages to capturing the spend once you've got the person in place. Shopping malls can often invest in areas like toilets or sitting space so poorly and in- inadequately. And if anyone is going to have to need to use a bathroom or sit down and rest or take a phone call and they don't enjoy or feel comfortable in that space, they're just not going to visit again. It's basic retail and yet it's still worldwide there are cases of it being done badly day in day out. That was Kate Hardcastle of Insight with Passion Retail Consultants here in the UK speaking to me here on Business Daily from the BBC.